Notorious, enigmatic, brutal, this is the story of Marco Williams, Herbus Camacho, better known as Marcola, the man who rose from the shadows to become the kingpin of Brazil's most dangerous gang. His name strikes fear in the hearts of many. His power stretches far beyond the prison walls, where he continues to call the shots. But how did a young man become a legend? A legend of crime? We'll delve into the dark underbelly of Brazil, where desperation breeds violence and loyalty is a matter of survival. We'll trace Marcola's ascent, the ruthless tactics he employed, and the iron grip he maintains on his criminal empire. This is more than just a story of a criminal mastermind. It's a story of shattered lives, broken communities, and the fight for a future free from fear. Join me as we unveil the truth behind Marco Williams' Herbas Camacho, the rise, the reign, and the legacy of Brazil's most notorious gang leader. This is Marco Williams' Herbas Camacho, the rise of Brazil's notorious gang leader, and you won't want to miss it. Early life a descent into the underbelly. Born in the sprawling metropolis of Sao Paulo in 1968, Marcos Williams Herbas Camacho, or Marcola as he would later be known, didn't have the luxury of a sheltered childhood. Fate dealt him a cruel hand early on. By the tender age of nine, Marcola found himself orphaned, thrust into a world that offered little compassion for the young and vulnerable. The bustling streets of Sao Paulo became his new home, a harsh and unforgiving environment where survival was a daily struggle. Here, amidst the concrete jungle, Marcola learned the brutal realities of life on the margins. Food and shelter became precious commodities, and the only currency he possessed was his cunning and desperation. Petty theft became his means of survival, a constant dance with danger and the ever-watchful eyes of the authorities. It was during this desperate period that Marcola acquired his now infamous nickname. The streets offered solace in some dark corners, and for many young outcasts, glue-sniffing, cola in Brazilian slang, provided a temporary escape from their harsh reality. Marcola, forever marked by his early struggles, became known simply as Marcola, a chilling fusion of his name and the very substance that symbolized his fight to survive in a world that had cast him aside. Rise of Marcola, graduation to infamy. The late 1980s marked a turning point in Marcola's life. The streets, his reluctant teacher, had honed his criminal skills. Petty theft, once a means of survival, no longer sufficed. Marcola craved something more, a bigger score, a way to rise above the desperation of his youth. This ambition, fueled by a potent mix of desperation and a growing sense of defiance, propelled him towards a more audacious form of crime, bank robbery. These heists weren't the amateurish affairs of a street urchin. Marcola, hardened by his experiences, approached them with a newfound ruthlessness and meticulous planning. He assembled a crew of like-minded individuals, each possessing a specific skill set that would contribute to the success of the operation. Their targets were no longer convenience stores, but major financial institutions, symbols of wealth and power in a society that had offered him nothing. However, the thrill of the heist inevitably led to its consequence. One such operation, audacious but ultimately flawed, landed Marcola behind bars. The prison system designed for rehabilitation became for Marcola a different kind of crucible. Here, amidst the violence and despair, he would forge a path that would change the face of Brazilian crime. It was within these brutal walls that a fateful encounter would rewrite his destiny and the destiny of countless others. Little did anyone know, the seeds of a criminal empire were about to be sown. Marcola, the street rat turned bank robber, was about to become Marcola, the kingpin. The birth of a beast, the PCC's rise to power, the Primero Comando da Capital, PCC, or the First Capital Command, wasn't your average collection of prison thugs. Sure, violence was a tool in their arsenal, but under Marcola's cunning leadership, the PCC morphed into something far more sophisticated. Unlike the disorganized gangs that preceded them, the PCC became a well-oiled criminal machine, operating with a chilling efficiency that belied its prison origins. Marcola, the once desperate street kid, proved to be a born strategist. He recognized the potential for organization within the chaotic prison walls. With a keen intellect and a ruthless pragmatism, he began to consolidate power, recruiting other inmates and fostering a sense of loyalty that transcended the prison bars. 
He understood the importance of communication and control, and through a network of smuggled cell phones and a carefully constructed hierarchy, Marcola orchestrated a criminal empire from his very cell. The PCC's reach extended far beyond the prison walls. Marcola, the puppet master, used his network of loyal lieutenants to establish control over drug trafficking routes within Brazil. Extortion became a lucrative business, with businesses and individuals alike forced to pay a tax to ensure their safety. And when the PCC deemed it necessary, prison riots erupted with terrifying precision, a brutal display of power that served as a chilling message to anyone who dared to oppose them. The PCC, under Marcola's leadership, wasn't just a prison gang. It had become a powerful criminal syndicate, a shadow government operating within the very heart of Brazil, the ghost in the machine, Marcola's reign from the shadows. Marcola, the man who rose from the unforgiving streets of Sao Paulo, became more than just a leader within the PCC. He morphed into a phantom, a specter haunting the Brazilian underworld, the ghost in the machine. This moniker wasn't solely attributed to his physical absence from the streets. It embodied his ability to wield immense power from the confines of his prison cell. His reputation, however, wasn't solely built on fear. An unsettling paradox emerged. Marcola, the ruthless criminal mastermind, also possessed a disarming charm that earned him the nickname Playboy. This ability to manipulate, to weave a web of influence through calculated kindness and charisma, proved to be a potent weapon in his arsenal. He cultivated loyalty not just through fear, but through a twisted sense of camaraderie, fostering a belief within his followers that they were part of something bigger, a rebellion against a corrupt system. The key to Marcola's reign was his unwavering control over information. Smuggled cell phones became his scepter, his connection to the outside world. Through this clandestine network, he issued orders, coordinated operations, and maintained a stranglehold on the PCC's activities. His followers, a loyal legion both inside and outside the prison walls, became his eyes and ears, his extensions on the streets. Marcola, the enigmatic playboy, became a ghost in the machine, a puppeteer pulling the strings of a criminal empire from the shadows. His influence felt far beyond the walls of his cell. The PCC's influence grew like a virus. They spread throughout Brazil's prison system, becoming a major player in the drug trade. Marcola, the unseen hand, became a legend, a folk hero to some, a ruthless criminal to others. But here's the crazy part. Despite being incarcerated for most of his life, Marcola remains a powerful figure. The question is, can the Brazilian authorities ever truly stop him? Marcola's story is far from over. The question of whether the Brazilian authorities can truly sever the ghost in the machine's grip on the PCC remains a chilling unknown. While advancements in technology and prison security have made smuggled cell phones less common, the PCC has proven its ability to adapt. Marcola's legacy may lie not just in the criminal empire he built, but in the ruthless efficiency and adaptability he instilled within its ranks. But for now, that's all we have time for on this deep dive into the life of Marcos Williams Herbus Camacho, better known as Marcola. If you enjoyed exploring the dark underbelly of the Brazilian underworld, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more true crime content.